So hi, Andrea, this is Andrea Dobson. Thanks so much, Andrea, for coming on to talk about um, your rugby career with the life, for the Life with the Lionesses project. So you're one of our dual coders. So you played for Great Britain and England, and there aren't that many people that have done that. So that's great. So um, uh, if we could just start with um, where and when you were born and how you got into playing rugby league. Uh, yeah, so I'm originally from Burnley. Um, I'm 35, so born in 1987. Um, yeah, and it's not it's not a rugby league place really. It's not even really a rugby place. I think there's more union than league, but it's it's heavily football dominated. Um, and I started when I was at school. I just I was just one of those kids who just did every sport. And there was a um, a coach called Steve Swan who he's actually a sponsor of the Castleford Tigers now. I think Castleford Tigers women. Um. I think I always get his job title wrong, but I think he was some sort of community youth worker um in our area and he was just a massive rugby league fan and he wanted to set up a girls' team. So he came and did an after school club and and just being one of the girls who did everything, every sport, the PE teacher was just like, Oh, well, you know, a group of girls we stay behind and do rugby. So we stayed and I, I really enjoyed it. I never really thought much of it, but in those days before GDPR, he like took our names and home telephone numbers off the teacher and <laughs> I'd, I'd got home that day and he'd already rung my mum and dad and asked if I'd like to go and play and you know they mm-hmm. they said I'd go and sent me down so I, I wasn't overly keen to be honest but um my dad took me and and that was it I, I went ever since that's brilliant so was so did Steve then just carry on with that in Burnley and you just carried on playing at school yeah so, and out yeah, school. so that was under 12 well we didn't carry on at under school under 12s all oh, right yeah. wow gosh you were so that we young we played the odd game for school, but nothing, nothing major at all. And then we carried on playing. Um, yeah, we started at under 12s for Pendle Panthers and that team ran up until that open age. And then open age, it just kind of fizzled out and we struggled and and we moved on. But yeah, I've still got some of my best mates who I played rugby with at 12 year old. So That's amazing. Because yeah. you're right, it's not a rugby league area, Bernie, is it? So that's great that, that he came in. And So did you love it from that time, from when you started playing? Um, I enjoyed it. I didn't. I wasn't kind of like immediately enthralled, but I think it was more that it was something that I was good at. I mean, yeah. I'm. I was always kind of a bit bigger, a bit more into sport than the girls at school, and it was just something that fit me a little bit better than, than some sports. I wasn't a netballer, and um, mm. I was always in goal for football or hockey and stuff because I like that little bit more contact. So, yeah, it just kind of fit me and. And yeah, the rest is history, I suppose. So so when that kind of, when you say that um, Pendle Panthers kind of ran its course, what happened then and, and how old were you at that point? Um, so I was 16. I played, they, they kind of merged when I was 16 with a team in Morecambe, which is, a, it was a real trek. And it, do you know what? The club really tried to to stick together and it, it was nomadic. We didn't really have a home. You know, we, we used to put rugby posts up in the middle of an athletics track Mm. Um, so we just didn't really have a home um, so I stayed there till I was 16 then I went to a team in Rochdale called Hillside Hawks right um, and looking back there was a, there's a lot of a lot of women who played at Hillside Hawks who kind of disbanded and went elsewhere so you know Beth Shuck played Vicky Molly Jenny Wells Bay um, you know there's, there's quite Sarah Harrison there's quite a few who played at Hillside Hawks and then kind of went back to the home you know the, the hometown team that's how I went to, yeah I went to Hillsborough at uh, Hillsborough not sorry Hillside Hawks um when right. I was 16 and played there for three years yeah wow so um and do, were you still at school at this point or had you left <sighs> oh I can't remember I think I was still at school I right. must have been still at school yeah because um I think it was my last year of school yeah. Right. Okay. So then, tell me how you um what your pathway was through to playing for Great Britain then. Um, so yeah, so I played at Hill, Hill I keep saying Hillsborough because I live in Hillsborough. <laughs> it's because you're in, Sheff- in Sheffield. Yeah, because yeah. I'm in Sheffield. Um, yeah, so I played, I played, I did Lancashire, so we played in the leagues. I did Lancashire under 16s and open age at the same time. Right. Um, was that then, fun, that county level? Was that good? Yeah, again, all you just play with all your mates. Like, yeah. again, we had quite a high number of people from our team and, and Hillside and, and bits of bobs and stuff. So yeah, it was, it was all dead fun. Um, I probably preferred the under sixteens to the open age, to be honest. But um, yeah, so I played Lancashire, and I remember going to play a tournament at Castleford Panthers. I can't, I can't remember who we played, but I think it's like a three-way tournament. I played, and Jackie Sheldon was watching, and that was kind of in the spring of two thousand and three. And 
after I played, she just spoke to me and said, would I be interested in joining the squad, potentially going on tour that year to New Zealand? And and I was just, I've been 16, I was just kind of like, oh, yeah, yeah, that'd be, yeah. Well, that like, kind of, I don't think it really sunk in what, what it really meant, but I was just yeah. like, yeah. So, yeah, joined the squad in the spring. That's amazing. And uh, what did your mum and dad think about that? Because, I mean, that's, that's a right achievement at that age, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, if you ever met my mum or anybody who's met my mum, she'll tell anybody about me and my achievements to um, an embarrassing level. So, um, <laughs> yeah, dead proud, dead proud. I think, you know, I, I don't come from a massively sporty family or anything um, and certainly not a rugby yeah. background or anything like that. And, you know, I think my dad was proud. He, he spent every Wednesday taking me to Hillside in Rochdale, which is a 45-minute drive away from home and, and you know, obviously, I didn't drive, so we went to every match, and it just oh, yeah, it's a big um, commitment, isn't it? Yeah, and I think you know what, you know, I've I had friends who who parents weren't as committed, and he used to ferry us all round really, take a car oh. full and and do that. So yeah, it's it was it was probably a bit more more special for him, and yeah, that's lovely. So um, we've heard from lots of the other um women about the fundraising and things for going on tour. What happened in two thousand and three? You were still were you still fundraising? Did you have to fundraise? Yes. Yeah, so the tour the tour in two thousand and three was sixteen hundred pound a person or a player. Um, again, I was kind of lucky that I, I joined it late as well. So, um, my parents paid for me to go. Mm. I had to pay them back now, but um. Yeah, they funded they funded me to go. Obviously, being sixteen, I, I wouldn't have that sort of money anyway. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, I know a lot of the girls had to do, you know, all sorts of fundraising mm-hmm. and getting sponsorship and support to go. But yeah, I that's was, amazing. I was, yeah. Um, so what was it like? What What are your memories of it of going? So you were re- you were really young. You must have been one of the youngest in the squad. Yeah, I was sixteen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I think the youngest in the squad well, at yeah. the time. Mm. I'm not sure if there's been anybody younger. At, they might have been, I don't, I'm not sure how old Emily was, but um, yeah, probably a bit blurred to be honest. I think, I don't think you, I don't think you realise kind of what you've done until you reflect. I think it was the first time I'd flown as well, been on a plane, oh. I'd not been abroad. So 24 hours to New Zealand. Um, wow. Yeah, I know, I, you know, Sarah Dixon, who I played with at Pendle Panther, she got selected as well. So I, I was going with a friend and. Oh, um, that's nice. I didn't know that many of them, to be honest. I kind of joined the squad quite late, went as 23rd player. So, right. you know, I think originally they, they were only going to take 22 and then they took a 23 and a 24. So I was lucky to, I was That's lucky to go and be a part of it. Yeah. Um, you must have been really impressive, like, at, you know, at 16 for Jackie to look and think, okay, she's coming. Like that is, that's really impressive, isn't it? Um. Yeah, well, I'll I tell you, it's it is, really though. impressive. Yeah, yeah no, um, <laughs> I, yeah, I, I just enjoy playing rugby, and I, I, yeah. I was quite a physical player, and I don't know, I, yeah, I just, I was just glad to get the opportunity, really. Yeah, yeah. And what was it? Did you get um many matches? What did you play when you were out there? Um, I played in three, three out of the five, I think. So I played, oh, I played against the Cook Islands. Fantastic. Um, I can't. It's bad that I can't remember. I always forget. It's a long time um, ago. Well, I definitely played three. So I played two in the group stages, and then I played in the semi final against um, New Zealand Maori. I don't think I did very well, to be honest. I came off the bench, played about ten minutes, and then got subbed again. So I think, uh, <laughs> yeah, I tried my best, but it, yeah, there's some. Um, I played, I played front row as well down the middle, and I wasn't small, but there was some um, big, powerful women from the southern hemisphere, and to kind of to kind of be thrown in and play it was yeah it was a massive experience and a learning curve and I, I thoroughly enjoyed it but yeah I've, uh, I certainly wasn't the best player there but I tried. Wow, that's, and and what and what was it like off the pitch did you um yeah we did you feel at home with everyone was it a nice was it a nice experience? Um yeah on and off I think I think it's always tough again coming into a squad late mm-hmm. and being quite young under the legal age to drink and just yeah, it was. I, I did find it honestly. I did find it quite tough. I enjoyed it, and again, I've met some friends for life, and I've still I'm still close friends with some some of the players who went. But um, probably a little bit daunting, just yeah. you know, because there's a lot of women who who I grew up being 13, 14, and I remember going to watch when Great Britain played at Dewsbury. We played oh. Australia, and my friend was a ball girl, and I went being thirteen years old and looking at these players, 
you know, likes of Jane Banks, Lisa yeah. Max, Brenda Dobrik, like, and, and just watching and kind of being in awe of those players. And then two and a half years later, being sat on a plane and pitching a, on yeah. tour with them. So, yeah, mixed emotions, really. I think it you're just finding your feet. And yeah. being 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 a young player, you just kind of want to fit in and it's it just takes a little bit of time. But, yeah, yeah I've, I've really enjoyed it. And I've got fond memories of it. Um, but, yeah, very different to other tours. Yeah. So, t- so tell me about those then. So that was obviously the last time Great Britain played as Great Britain. So yeah. they reformed as England in what? So what happened kind of between 2003 to, to 2007? Because it, you didn't go on tour again, did you, until then? No. Not a lot, yeah. nothing really. We kind of, we came back from tour, then it just, we didn't even really have a debrief or anything. It was just... Wow. It branded, obviously, the RFL took it on, and then it was relaunched as England Rugby League in 2007. So right, okay. So in that time, there was, there was nothing, and then... um, oh, know, well, Who were you playing for between that time? Were you still in Rochdale? Yeah, yeah, so still in Rochdale, and then I joined... Wakefield, which then became Featherstone in 2008. So England rebranded 2007. Um, Joe Warburton was coaching at that time, um, who was our Hillside Hawks coach. Oh, great. Um, so we went to France and, and Joe was the coach. Brenda Dobak was the assistant coach. And then 2008 was the next World Cup. So it was yeah. a five-year gap between the World Cups. And then um, 2008, I joined Wakefield. Right. Mainly and due to the fact that I went to uni in Leeds. Um, it was a bit perfect. closer. And, yeah. you know, a lot a lot of the girls who played for England were at Wakefield as well. So it was just, it, it was an easy transition, really. Right, OK. So what? So t- t- talk me through 2008 then, so the next World Cup. So that's kind of, you. so what, you're 21 at that point? So still really young yeah, as well. 21, yeah. 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 <laughs> what was that yeah. like? Um, oh, un- unbelievable. Unbelievable. Probably one of my favourite tours, just... Mm mainly because I think somebody blew a budget while we were out there. So we stayed in like five-star apartments, out there Amazing. for three weeks, staying on the Gold Coast. Like, and yeah, it was it was unbelievable. I mean, the results as well were pretty close. We, you know, we, 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 we played France and Russia and beat them really convincingly and then lost kind of 22-4 to Australia, um, 16-8 in a semi-final against New Zealand. So we're, we're pretty close, to be fair. Um, but yeah, again, a massive experience for me, like playing with with my friends and and going yeah. across the world, and and yeah, it was you know, and the hospitality and the and what the Aussies put on was really good. I mean, they, they're still a little. I don't know if I'm allowed to say, but you know, still a little bit playing games a bit. Our games were two o'clock in the afternoon. Right. Some good referees. Um. Yeah, so you you still got to put up with a little bit of that, but yeah, unbelievable tour, yeah, really. And good. and um, were you still having to pay for yourself to go at this point? Uh, no, so it was funded by then. So Fantastic. it was funded in. Yeah, I mean, we got. Yeah, it was all funded. There was obviously we didn't get anything to go. I, I think yeah. we contributed three hundred pound. Right. They asked us to contribute that, but I gave a check to the RFL, which they didn't cash for quite a few months. So then it Amazing. Bounced. So really, I didn't pay for it, but um, I tried to. We'll have to so cut that bit really out. Be up now, I'll stay back and pay yeah. that Exactly. But, um, yeah. Oh wow. And could you see the difference, kind of, in terms of between two thousand and three and two thousand and eight, in terms of what you were getting? I suppose with that RFL backing that hadn't been there previously, really. Yeah, one hundred percent. It just you know, where we were training, the facilities, the staff that, you know, were starting to look a little bit more, not that it wasn't a, a professional setup with with GB. Obviously, that came through Walla, so yeah. it, it's obviously not with the governing body. It's it's the amateur side of it. So in the nicest possible way, I don't think it would have ever got to that point if it had stayed with Walla. So, yeah, we're getting there. And obviously, being funded was a massive thing. Um, yeah. And just, you know, just the staff and the setup was was a lot was a lot better yeah okay and so then so that was 2008 and yeah what about after that because you I think you went you went away a lot didn't you kind of after that like looking yeah through the we levels. went yeah so 2008 we're in Australia and then we kind of had a what's the word like an alternate agreement with France so 2009 we went to France right um 
and played a couple of games there. Like 2010, we went to New Zealand for three weeks and had a test series against them. Fantastic. Absolutely, absolutely pissed by them. Um, oh, really? So at this point, so were you working at this point? And were... Yeah, yeah, I've always worked full time, yeah. So um, what do you do? Um, I currently work for the Sheffield Eagles as... Uh, well, the foundation is a rugby development officer, but all the time I played for England, I worked for the RFU, so rugby union, doing a no similar way. sort of job in Sheffield. Yeah, really? Oh, interesting. So, and were they all right about you taking time off to go for three weeks and stuff? I, I mean, yeah, but I always took it as annual leave, so yeah. okay, I gave me annual leave to to go. And Brilliant. I, I mean, it had to be authorized for over so many weeks, but yeah, they were all, to be fair, like my boss and and just the staff were just really supportive of it. I mean, they took right. the lick a bit because it was rugby league and not rugby union, but <laughs> yeah. um, I always got the time off. I just have to have it as annual leave. Yeah, okay, great. Sorry, I interrupted. So so oh, you had a reciprocal thing with France, so they came here, you went there, and that was that was good fun then, I imagine. Yeah, yeah, and it was always, France were always kind of, you didn't really know what you were going to get. I think when you went over there, it was, almost, it was always a little bit tougher. The weather was a bit hotter. It was a little bit more hostile. Um yeah, going into their ground really? and their players. But yeah, it was always really enjoyable. And before before it got a bit too professional, we always used to go out and have a good drink with them afterwards and Oh, fantastic. End up with an headache on the way home and then <laughs> a bit of trouble. But yeah. <laughs> and so when was the next World Cup after two thousand and eight? Uh twenty thirteen. Yeah, okay. and another five year one, yeah. Yeah, wow. And was that the Festival of World Cups? So there were a few, the kind of there was the police and stuff as well. Yeah, was that, that in Australia? No, that was a home one, 2013. Oh, of course, yeah. Home, so what yeah. was that like? Oh, brilliant. Again, yeah, you know, comparing it to 2008 in the nicest possible way, it was mm. it was tough to kind of compare it with what Australia put on for us. But yeah, really good. And I, you know, I think probably our, our best shot of winning a World Cup was that one and yeah we we didn't quite manage it you know a couple of controversial things but um yeah do you know what just nice you know you don't get the weather going to Australia but you can have family and friends watching They're, yeah you know, we, played at Featherstone, we played at some home ground clubs um yeah really good that's ace yeah and what so um so how old were you then so that was 21 26 yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, wow. So, still, still kind of so you, you had a lot of um international experience, like that's that's great. And so, still playing um over in Wakefield, straight Featherstone at this point, yeah, yeah. I, that was once I moved to Featherstone in to well, Wakefield Featherstone in 2008. I, I didn't play for another club until I finished last year, so right, yeah, still playing there. And that was nice because we played the we played New Zealand in the semi final at, at Featherstone. Our oh. home club and it was although we lost it was it was it was probably my favorite game to play in just because there was quite a lot of people watching it was obviously our my my home club and and yeah hopefully it was a good show for women's rugby as well oh and, definitely yeah. definitely yeah so obviously then the most recent world cup 2017 and you were yeah. in that as well yeah <laughs> you're phenomenal um and what was that like so that was your last your last world cup yeah, do you know what? It wasn't planning on being my last one either. And again, I was for that one. I was thirty, um, and I was captain for that one. So I went out oh, there as captain. Wow. Um, yeah. Oh, what was, was that like? The dream, really. I, do you know what? And I got asked by Chris Chapman in twenty fourteen after after that twenty thirteen World Cup. I was still. I wasn't. I was a senior player, but there were still five or six players older, more experienced. Yeah. And, and whatever the you know you like to Lindsay Anfield, them slow Beth Sutcliffe, they all they all were kind of my friends group and and whatever, but they all kind of retired and finished and you know it was, I suppose it was kind of the natural thing for me to do it because I was kind of then one of the older players and stuff, but um yeah a dream really I I just never it never crossed my mind. There's always somebody who who I kind of looked up to and Aww. and was just that more senior person and yeah it just never crossed my mind until. Uh, until I got asked in twenty fourteen, and then obviously like it's it's a no brainer, and yeah, dream. I, I'm the most competitive person in the world, so everything I do, I just want to be the best that I can yeah. be. And to to captain my country was yeah, it was it was a real honor. Again, that that World Cup we struggled. I think we'd we'd got there in twenty seventeen, and and 
the Aussies and Kiwis had just kicked on quite a lot more than we had, although we we put the work in and yeah. a lot of work. But I just think maybe the domestic competition and injuries and kind of like the, the pool of players we had, we just they'd, they'd stepped it on a bit and was was quite a, quite a way in front again. So yeah, yeah although okay. it was a, a brilliant experience, yeah, we we got beat quite convincingly. I mean, we beat Papua New Guinea. We we drew with the Cook Islands, which was disappointing, but. Yeah, some big scores against Australia and New Zealand, and yeah, it, it, it hurt a little bit that one. Oh yeah, yeah. So you you weren't planning on having that as your last one, did you say? You were, no, were you thinking I wasn't, that you'd have twenty twenty one. Yeah, I, that was that was my goal. Um, twenty twenty one, I'd be thirty four because again we had a handful of players at that twenty seventeen World Cup who were thirty five, thirty six, and yeah. You need that mix. You need that experience. And you looked at the, the Aussie team at the time, and their core, their captaincy, their their core players were again thirty five, thirty six. Yeah. You need that more. So I, I kind of always had it in my mind. Twenty twenty one, a home World Cup. It'd be yeah. nice, to, you know, five World Cups, and kind of finish on that. But COVID hit. You know, the few things happened in my personal life that kind of affected things. And yeah, yeah, for one reason or another, it just. Yeah, it. I think that was it, and you know, I went back playing. I I played the year after I played twenty eighteen. Went to France, and yeah, I just my heart just wasn't a hundred percent in it. Really? I, yeah, it, it was strange. But again, I had some personal personal things going on, and um, a little bit of injuries. I had a Achilles tendonitis, which I'd had for like twelve months. I couldn't seem to shift, and I just I'd rather have. You know, I was open and honest with Craig at the time. I was the coach, and there was a lot of younger players coming through, and I was older. I was one of the older ones, and it. I think the a little bit of a culture shift, and like I say, I, I love playing for England. Every time you pull that that badge, it's special, and it is special. And I just, I'd rather leave on a high and on my terms, and say good luck, and really support the team, and rather than kind of regretting kind of continuing. And that year yeah. in. 2000, uh, 2018 or was it 2019 2019 I think one of them anyway uh, <laughs> they went to Papua New Guinea so they went to the yeah went to the Nines, went to Papua New Guinea and I just I kind of sat down and thought assuming that I would have been selected I, you know you never know I might not have been but I just sat down and thought did I want to be away from home for three and a half weeks my daughter yeah. was starting school in September so I just I just thought I just thought that was the right time to yeah be yeah finish. Yeah, but, and like yeah, you say, then, on your terms, that's really nice, isn't it? That's yeah, when you decide. And, yeah, yeah. And Craig kind of left the door open and said, you know, you might because I was continuing to play club rugby, and he said, you know, you might, you know, you might have the season of your life and and get selected and want to want to play. So it was kind of yeah, I wanted to finish, but it it was still kind of a little bit of an option. But then obviously COVID hit. Um, you know, we had a tough time at our club at Featherstone. We lost Nat. And I had a year out pretty much just running because I couldn't get in a gym, couldn't do anything. And then I went yeah. back to contact and I just, I'd literally played like 20 years, every every season of contact. And then had a season off and I just couldn't, I couldn't get a rhythm back of contact. I got injuries. I, you know, I tore a quad, I got knocked out. I just couldn't kind of get yeah. that momentum back. So, yeah, once, you know, we lost Nat and a few of us said we'd do, we'd do one last season and, that was just decided for me that at the end of that season, I'd, I yeah. was done. So right, okay, well, that's good. That's yeah. that's amazing, though, isn't it? It's amazing. Like you say, play for twenty years. That's yeah. You know, that's it's a lot to put your body through, isn't it? You know. Yeah, and I think I've I've always kept. I mean, I've had, I went through phases of not being very fit. Um, I got dropped in twenty ten after that, but um, right. Yeah, I think I've always tried to keep myself quite quite fit and just kind of keep going and yeah. when I when we couldn't do that contact and when we lost that kind of physicality of it to then go back into it I just found it really hard and being yeah. 30 33 32 33 I'd, I'd still be hurting on a Thursday and just just really struggling to get you know to recover so yeah, yeah. okay yeah, yeah. um so what? So when you think about your international career in particular, uh, what would you say are the, the the most rewarding bits or the highlights of it? Um, probably captaining England. I think you know, as cheesy as it sounds, as well, it was it was a dream to captain him and you know to go to 
Australia in 2017 and my daughter came, she was three. Oh, and some amazing. family members, so she remembers going to Australia and singing the national anthem and, you know, um, my partner at the time was playing as well. So, you know, she just sees that her mums were playing for England and she, you know, she remembers that and that was really special for, for us. So, yeah, and I think, and again, without sounding cheesy, I've spent 16 years of my life playing for England with my best mates. You know, it's you turn you used to turn up to training on a Saturday and your mates are there, you go and play rugby with your mates and then you go and have some tea and you know, you go on holiday with your friends playing rugby and it was just yeah, it's that was really special. And I think again when I finished when I decided to finish, it's because I, I didn't have that friendship group again and it's it's they'd finished and not that I was left on my own, but yeah. it's, it's just not quite it wasn't quite the same. Just not quite the same, so yeah, being able to play rugby with your best mates for 16 years is, is special. And then to finish, to, you know, to go to the last World Cup as captain, it, that that was special as well. Um. Oh, the thought that your daughter was there and she saw both of you, like that is, that's yeah, lovely, yeah. isn't it? That's amazing. Um. And what about the most difficult bits then? What were the most challenging bits of, of, of your career? Um. I don't, well, I think in general, it's just, the commitment so again like you know having a partner who played as well and a daughter it's just you have to you have to fully commit it's not you know you don't get paid and we never did it to get paid mm -hmm. and um I think it was just that commitment if you yeah. if you committed to a world cup and you committed to it then it's in the gym it's it's eating it's going to weddings and parties and not drinking and mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. I think when I finished playing some of my best mates from college and stuff um I was like, oh, I'll be able to come out on a Sunday now or I'll be able to drink at that party on a Saturday because it was literally through all my... I obviously went out and and did that, but it was always, oh, I'm playing rugby on Sunday, I can't come, or oh, I can't yeah. have too much to drink, I'm, I'm playing. So, yeah, probably that. Just the general commitment of it, and it was, you know, it was never a sacrifice for me. It was just, it was a choice because we wanted to do it, and, you know, we speak now about why, why you want to play for England and why you want to put that badge on, and I think for the women I played with for a long time, it was nobody was watching what you were doing. No, you know, there's no yeah. social media. There's no, yeah. you know, where it's a, it's a lot different now. Um, you know, nobody was watching, but we still went to the gym. We still yeah. did that stuff. And it's, um, mm. you know, getting to the gym at six o'clock in the morning when the cleaners mm. were getting there to mm. go do the gym session, to come home and tag team. So, you know, yeah. it's, yeah. yeah, that was probably it. And, yeah. I mean, that is hard, isn't it? Like both of you doing it. And like you say, you know, you've both got, got full-time jobs, got, you're going, got, got a child. Um, you're not getting paid for it. It's like, that's, but like, I love that, that what you just said, you know, that it's not a sacrifice, but it's a commitment. <clears throat> There's a difference there, isn't there? It's like, but, you know, and, and, um, and that's lovely. That's lovely to, to hear. When, when, di when did they start getting paid? For going? Um, we got, so we got expenses. So, I think for the 2013 World Cup, maybe a little bit before that, we started getting petrol expenses. So, right. like you could, you get your money back for traveling to training, okay, and, and stuff. But <laughs> I, other than that, yeah, the act. I think the first time the women got paid was for the nines. Right. So that year, I decided to finish. Right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's it. How does how does that make you feel? Kind of, you know, looking now um, at this upcoming World Cup and thinking. Um, of the stage that these women are playing on and that they are finally getting paid for that. And, you know, what, what are your thoughts about that? And oh, it's brilliant. Like, well, you know, it's it's almost like what, not what we went through, but what, you know, again, what we did and, you know, doing it without getting paid and not having any, you know, light on us and, and whatever is, it's, it's ace that these girls are getting paid. It's They should be. Like, you know, it, it's the same as they're still... They're not getting paid. They're still trained. They're like part-time athletes. Yeah. yeah. Without getting paid, you know, it's it's a lot of commitment. It's a lot of time. Like, absolutely, they should be getting. They should be getting paid for it. So yeah, it's it's brilliant for them. You know, and they're still like I said, they're still working as well. It's not you know, it's 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 still a far cry from the men. Yeah. yeah. But it, and it's but, probably more pressure now. There's probably with you know the women's game being on staff, for the top teams. You know, there's a there's a lot more limelight on on the women now who are in the squad and who are playing and mm. it's 
yeah it's, there's, I think there's probably a lot more pressure mm, yeah a lot yeah more people but... watching a lot more people judging a lot more people with opinions on it and you know without actually knowing what mm. you know what what they actually do to play so yeah, yeah definitely absolutely. you know it, it'd be nice for them one day to to be able to play rugby league and get paid and do it as a job you know like they do rugby union yeah that that'd be the ultimate for for them yeah and how do you you know how do you feel about the part that you played in that you know kind of you said at the start that you don't think about kind of what what you've done and what you've achieved but now is a good time to be thinking about that isn't it and and you know thinking about your children and what they'll think of that and and things it's you know it's quite it's quite something isn't it yeah yeah I'm I find it really tough I'm not I'm not one for kind of putting myself out there and 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 whatever I, I did it because I love rugby I love playing with mates and I just I wanted to be the best I could so um yeah I think I think you sit back and reflect and you know when people kind of celebrate achievements of what what the women have done you do kind of reflect and think yeah it's mm. it's a big thing and I, I just enjoyed it and I, I enjoy my time and I enjoy playing and um I enjoy watching now so yeah it's mm. Mm. I think I think you reflect on certain things like this, it, it does make you reflect a little bit more, and um, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. that's great. I mean, I, I you know, I think I think that that that's it, isn't it? Just that kind of thinking, yeah, like you weren't doing it for you know anything other than you loved it and you enjoyed it and you're obviously really good at it. But what you have done and all of those other women is paved the way for where it is now and where it will go in the future. And in 10 years time, like you say, it might be, you know, hopefully still further on and you don't have any of that without all the commitment and um, work that people like you put into it. And, and, and I think as an outsider, you can see that and appreciate it maybe a bit easier than, than you can, cause you're in it and stuff, but it's amazing. And, you know, to see what you've done and, you know, kind of thinking about the amount of, caps you've got and stuff it's you know it's it's fantastic kind of you know not physical caps but you know, yeah. like but you, you know and yeah it's just brilliant and and it's you know it's really lovely to hear your um experiences of it and um and it must be nice now to yeah just to kind of sit and watch them and, and watch them in the next couple of months and and probably be glad that you're not in it do you know what I mean you, you've got a little baby yeah. to look after yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know, I still, it, you know, you still, you still watch him get the shirts and and stand there singing that anthem, and it's still, it is very nostalgic, and it does like there's nothing, there's nothing better than standing there like representing your country and singing that national anthem, and you know, obviously with things what's gone on with obviously the the Queen at the minute, it's still very, that anthem is just really emotive, and it does it does just take you back to standing there, and it's yeah, it's it's really special because you know not obviously not everybody can experience that, so. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, it's really special. Oh, good. Oh, Andrea, thanks so much for that. That was absolutely brilliant. So lovely to hear your experiences and things.